Novels always provide great material for movies. Yan Geling is one of the writers, originally from China, who provided bountiful inspiration to the Chinese film industry. Born in Shanghai in the late 1950s, Yan experienced the huge changes within her home country and the perils of conflict as a war correspondent. These inspired her to start a writing career all over the world. There are many books she wrote about her China life and her understanding of her home country, including Youth, one of the latest work, which reads like a biographic novel and it was adapted into a Chinese film. Before the film's release, I spoke to Yan and learned about her insights. Uh, youth is uh, a such uh, um, uh, abundant life. You can afford to make uh, uh, wrong moves. So you can afford to waste uh, your love, uh, your emotions, and it, uh, it's uh, you can afford to be stupid. You know, just so, embrace everything. Right, right. You try everything. If it's a mistake, well, sorry. You know, that uh, I still have time to make up. Right. So uh, that's uh, you. You learn. You know, you learn by making mistakes. Mm -hmm. So it's all allowed, and the people will forgive you, and you forgive yourself too. But nowadays, if I make a mistake, I might never forgive myself. You are trying in this novel, speaking with different voices, as an author, hmm. but at the same time as a young dancer. So how would you be able to jump? back and forth between the used to be you and the current you. Was it painful? Um, Was it fun? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, uh, the, the author in the novel actually is also a, a, a fictitious uh, person uh, because I can tell uh, truth better uh, hiding behind my characters. I have more courage because then I don't have this self-censorship. You know, so if what if uh, people hold me responsible for what I said? You know, as a Geling or mm -hmm. as Yan Geling who said such and such, then they will probably I'll have to be responsible for all these uh, remarks. Mm -hmm. But uh, as an author who could be me or could be somebody else. You know, people can't really tell. Mm -hmm. Then I'll be much more courageous and much more uh, truthful. What was the writing process like for you? Is it about yourself or is it about your readers? Oh, it's always about myself. <laughs> <laughs> as Frank has said, I love you, Gerling. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I think uh, Gerling as a reader is very hard to please. Mm -hmm. And so I think and uh, it, every book I wrote, uh, uh, I only have one audience, which is uh, Myself, and it, it was used to be my father, you know, because my uh, uh, before he passed away, he was my first reader, and he was also my editor. You know, he, his uh, Chinese foundation is much better, so he would, uh, you know, misspell the words and he would uh, correct them. Yeah. Do you miss him? Of course, dearly. Oh my God, very badly, very badly, because he used to live here. Uh, uh, we used to live in um, my husband uh, as U U U.S. diplomat uh, 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 was uh, stationed in Africa. Uh, my father asked me to bring back African art. I did as much as he could because the weight was uh, so, uh, you know, so much. You tried your best. Yes, and I'm sure he enjoyed every minute of it. Yes. Yes, he used to just talk to, us, uh, to them like, ah, oh, yeah, it's, uh, well, I knew uh, if there were no Africa, the African art, there would be no Picasso. And he, he was just like, uh, you know, murmuring to these. Uh, and, uh, he was. Uh, yes. The world is like, I guess, yes. he's amazed. Yes. Always. Yeah. And we you were, have that too. Yes. You have that too. That kind of curiosity, that kind of passion. Yes. Um, and a, a tremendous mental energy. You know, could uh, one could tell. <laughs> <laughs> one could tell. <laughs> but you know what? I guess it's a very delicate balance that you, whether as a 
woman, as an individual, as a writer, to be cool-headed about what you've seen, what is going on, while at the same time still being passionate about life. Um, I have the ability to step aside or step behind. You know, I'm also very uh, uh, observant and uh, perceptive. But any good writer has to be cool-headed. Yes. Uh, you know, you have to have uh, uh, enough uh, rationality, uh, be, uh, which is to control uh, your passion mm -hmm. and uh, everything. Because uh, to write a novel is not like uh, just a paint uh, abstract painting. Not a painting. love letter to the officer. <laughs> no. Yeah, you have to uh, to use all your skills and your uh, best language, so which. Uh, uh, takes a, a lot of thinking, yeah. and uh, every novel has to have a meaning or m meanings, layers of meanings. So if you don't have that uh, rationality, that uh, 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 cool as uh, uh, as cool as uh, a thinker, mm. so you can't uh, uh, put those meanings in there. Mm. But you know, China is changing so fast. So any writer that can really dig themselves a hole and create something be able to be cool-minded is amazing. Um, I always remind myself uh, that I'm only a, a worker, you know, just a normal worker, ordinary. You have to go to your office every day. You know, don't be so uh, egocentric about your job. You know, it's just that, you know, if you spend more time there and you think more, you can write better. Mm -hmm. So this is just like any craftsman. Uh, you, 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 you spend all your concentration and your imagination and uh, you, can, you can work better pieces out. But you know, you've been through different kinds of cultural changes. Uh, here in China, then you go to the United States. What has this change been like for you? I mean, did you enjoy at the very beginning? Now, do you enjoy the same degree as you used to be? Oh, I think I'm just a born uh, a gypsy, you know, because uh, <laughs> since 12, uh, I've been uh, touring. touring from one, but you know, it's also one Always way drifting. station uh, after another, you know. Every day we, we travel, then uh, after we arrive, we give performance, and next day we pack and uh, travel, get on the, uh, on the truck again, and you know, Tibet is so big, and there are so many, uh, a sentry posts and uh, and uh, way stations and uh, small uh, regiments. Um, so it, it's to me it's very normal, mm -hmm. uh, very normal for me to be in a culture I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And so I I think then I I feel like uh, you know it's it makes me high you know and uh, it's t something I can learn mm -hmm. and something. Um, I can't take for granted, you know. I I don't like a life that I can take everything for granted. It, it, it uh, it's not my life. You I need like to be to, challenged. Yes, yes. I I, I want to uh, see something new. Uh, in Europe, uh, can uh, can satisfy my uh, the the desire of uh, being a gypsy mm -hmm. and traveling all the time because uh, you know one hour. Uh, of uh, flight, uh, you can be, an, uh, you can land in a different culture, That's different right. uh, language, a different uh, cuisine. You know, so it's uh, you know only see the their pillows. You know, German they have square pillows, and uh, French they have narrow pillows. <laughs> you know, you know, just it's just even so just details like that. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, huh? yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But those are very different from the novels that you're writing. So how are your exposure to all of these different cultures help you eventually to be able to get closer to what you exactly want to write, which is usually your own life, very Chinese life, I guess. I, uh, uh, you know, uh, normally I write the story which happened before 1990, right? Okay. So that that uh, I'm a very uh, familiar with. Yes, yes. And uh, I can tell stories with, with authority and authenticity. But write about uh, the contemporary China, I always have to 
uh, to do a lot of research. For example, the, the, the Dancing Man, you know, I, uh, I published last year, was about young dancing men working in a dancing hall, a very old Shanghai dancing hall, to uh, dance with uh, rich and much older ladies. So this kind of, it's totally opposite to the phenomenon before in Shanghai, which was a rich, big guy dancing with young uh, dancing girls. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought that, that this is a so, such an interesting you know, change. And now women have money and power, and they're single, they could do uh, the same thing as uh, the big rich guy uh, in 30s, 1930s. So I, um, I had to dance in there, right? <laughs> I had to get a, a coach, the dancing coach. Mm -hmm. So in, to, in order to understand and to observe all the dancers, uh, you know, all the, all the people entertaining themselves there. So I, every time I go to Shanghai, I would uh, go to the same dance dancing uh, dance hall and uh, to to get this uh, coach to teach me and so I became one of the characters in my novel and it was very expensive uh, uh, lessons <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, and, and what did you learn what did you learn um I le I learned how you know you have to buy them drinks so you have to buy them dinners so you have to pay <laughs> tips <laughs> <laughs> it's not an easy life. No, yeah. no. So you don't want to change uh, to the man's position, do no. you? <laughs> After all of this, no. <laughs> too complicated. Yeah. Then you you see, you you realize uh, how far the women have uh, changed. You know how far they have gone from you know those uh, uh, young dancing girls who, who, whose lives are totally controlled by the you know the, the big heads of uh, the society. Have we? Have we really changed that much, the Chinese women? Some of, yeah, some of us. So there was many uh, uh, single and uh, uh, powerful ladies nowadays. Are we as strong inner <laughs> as we used to as, be? Uh, yeah, I think we're stronger, uh, stronger um, uh, because of uh, the opportunities and, uh, of uh, getting education and the opportunities of working. But you know. The thing is, where are our role models? That is probably one of the most important thing for women. What do you make of this changes that women today's China are facing? From let's get liberated mm -hmm. to now you are half of the sky. And now real liberated because you have all options in your own hands, mm -hmm. apparently. Collective uh, subconsciousness is very hard to change. I used to say, you know, I, uh, I like men give me gifts, but I like better, I have the right to buy my own gift. Uh, when I uh, was in the US, um, my husband uh, uh, sent me on a house hunting. A trip. So he said, uh, uh, "The house, if you like, and then, then I'll love to live it in too." Because uh, you know, women make the home, right? Then I put a checkbook in my uh, pocket. <laughs> then I went. Then I saw this house I really like. Uh -huh. Then I put deposit. Five thousand for the deposit, okay. uh, and so that kind of power. Fortunately, I it's not five hundred thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the power you feel. Yeah. Economic power is very important. Important, yes. For self-respect. Yeah, but confidence. for you, just as you before you you asked me if uh, it's changing for better. But I think you know Chinese life is too governed by money, um, and uh, I think there is uh, something missing or the spiritual life. I'm anxious for Chinese people and anxious to see how they go. Uh, further, you know, without uh, the, that uh, the, the mind, uh, the, um, progress. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. Progress. Uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's. It always feel like uh, mm, there is more you want. There is more material you want. It, nobody realizes this is uh, always a limit to uh, your material desire. Um, so. So that's that's something I I want to uh, to be uh, um, 
Um, I don't know, maybe I write novels, write better novels, and more people read my novels and go to uh, film uh, theaters more and can uh, help a little bit. You have written scripts for almost every one of those big names in Chinese contemporary movie theaters these days. But these are the circumstances that you cannot control. And sometimes your story has to be changed. This is a very commercial society, which is very different from the basic quality you have as an individual. You're a romantic person to begin with, something you want to protect yourself from the, all the other surroundings. So all of these cannot be controlled. How does that work for you? Oh, well, I just uh, uh, try to do my job, you know, uh, and I always uh, 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 warn myself, okay, to, to make a movie is mainly director's uh, uh, creation, you know. You have to help him reach the, the best phase of his creation. It's not about uh, how you write, uh, what you write, because the, in the end, in the, it's going to be uh, the, you know, every department of the filmmaking that work. Mm -hmm. You know, every director, if five directors uh, f uh, uh, read my novels, uh, they all think this is a good uh, material for adaptation into a movie, and they see five different pictures That's from right. different novel. versions. Yes, uh, work with Zhang Chen, with mm -hmm. Chen Kai Ge, with yeah. Zhang Yimou, and uh, it's very interesting that uh, once. Uh, Chen Kai Ge and Chen, Zhong Chen are both interested in my uh, novella called The White Snake. Right. And, uh, you know, then Joan told me the, you know, what I'm going to make that movie into. And uh, from uh, uh, the Kai Ge's uh, script, uh, he, because he already had somebody yeah. um, adapted into a, a movie script, I said it's totally, totally different, different stories. Yeah, stories. So I understand, you know, you, if this director take this material, you have to let him do his own work. But you did observe from your perspective how some of the most well-known cultural figures in China work mm -hmm. and how do they interact, how is the public interacting with them, mm -hmm. and how they are reflecting upon their days and their work and what kind of future they are looking for in their own works because they need to talk to you. Yes, yeah. Um, for, for, for example, this time uh, when I worked with uh, Feng Xiaogang, uh, this time the experience is very smooth, mm -hmm. very happy. You know, uh, it's nothing he was deadly against. So I put everything I thought you should be in the script from the novel, and uh, he liked them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he, he uh, only that he said, this is too long, this is way too long, this is <laughs> script, you know, you ha have to cut one third. Mm -hmm. So then I was doing cutting and on a script. Gelin, such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank All you. All the best. For the and opportunity. Yeah. You're still living in youth. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. And that was Yang Geling, one of China's most well known contemporary writers, talking about her works and her life.